Flask is a micro framework for Python. It lets us quickly and easily create fully customizable, full featured web apps. In this video, I'm gonna take the data output from an API and I'm gonna create a simple one page app for you guys to check out. Hopefully it's helpful and useful for you some way and it should cover some of the basic concepts to get you started with your own Flask web apps. So here is the finished app. We've created a basic app that reaches out to the free BrewDog beer API and returns a random beer from their database and displays the data from the JSON response in the browser. To begin, we need to create a few new files, app.py, which will hold the Python code for our app, and the templates folder with an index.html file. This folder is where our app will look to for the HTML templates to render to the browser. This is a very basic app structure, used only for the smallest apps and a good place to start. Once your web apps become larger, you would split the app.py into multiple parts to help it all, keep it all neat and clear, but for us, learning this one as a single file will do. Now we will create the virtual environment in which we will work. I have a video on VEMV, Python 3.8's built-in environment manager that I will link to. We are going to create our new VEMV here and then activate it. Note that I've called my VEMV. You can obviously call this what you like, but I find this is nice and simple to remember. I would always recommend you use a virtual environment with any web app you create, as this makes it easier to keep track of the packages and the versions you are using. It also makes it a lot easier when it comes to deployment. Let's install the packages we need, Flask and requests. We do this as we would normally, with pip install. Once that is done, we will create a requirements.txt file using the output from pip freeze. This isn't completely necessary right now, but I find it helpful to have it there. Flask is a micro framework that requires very few lines of code to get it off the ground. It's one of the most popular Python web frameworks out there, possibly just second to Django right now. I like Flask because of its simplicity, yet its potential to be very powerful. There are many dev jobs out there relating to Flask too, so if you wanted to go pro, learning a web, web framework is a vital skill. Then import the request and JSON modules we need, and change the name of the rote function to something related. This is a very high level and basic look at Flask functions. There are obviously lots of other things that you can do with it. So let's stop and have a look at what we have right now and break it down a bit. We import Flask from Flask and then also render template. This is what we use to take the index.html we created earlier and render it when our function is run. App equals Flask instantiates the app. This means that we are creating a Flask instance or object and saving it to the variable app. The next thing is the root. In this case, this is a, a decorator that Flask uses to assign the URL being the root index. The app then runs the function underneath. Think of it as a web page for now. If we had another that was slash about, we would want to we would want it to render the about.html file and any, any code associated to that page. Like all functions, we can return something, and as we want it to return the HTML page, we use the render template function and call the index.html. Our index is blank right now, so let's go grab some styling to make it look better. Bulmo is like bootstrap, and it's quick and easy and simple. Let's go to the docs and grab what we need and where we can start. Here is a basic HTML template we can use and modify. It's a basic HTML file with two lines that link to the Bulma CDN for the CSS and JavaScript needed. This will let us load up their style sheets remotely without needing our own CSS or JS files. Let's copy this and put it into our own index.html file. Flask has its own built-in test web server, which we can use to see where we are, what we are doing. Before I start it, I'm going to put it into development mode. This means that any changes we make to our files will restart the server, allowing us to see them right away automatically. To do that, we use export flask underscore emv equals development. This sets an environmental variable on our system. It will be lost once you close the session, so remember to do it again if you leave and come back to your project. After that, type flask run, and that starts the web server, allowing us to load our app up at the browser locally on the IP 127.000 port 5000. The main part of our app is getting information from the beer API. So we'll load up the page and check the docs, and we'll find and copy the URL for random beer part. Now we can use request.get as we would normally in a Python web scraper to get that information and use the JSON module to load the data so we can get out the parts we need. If we use print, it will be returned to the terminal. With the local server running, we just need to refresh the page to see the data being returned. A quick check to the API docs again, and we want to get the name, the alcohol percent, description, and the food pairing at the bottom. So as you can see here, we've got an error and our app crashed. So always read your error messages. At the bottom, it tells us where this went wrong. In this case, it's because I tried to get data that didn't exist. The API response is a list in this case and needs to be indexed first before we try and call parts for the date and data. Let's write the code that we need to get the data and create the Python dictionary with it so we can easily send it to the template.
Here I am just printing out the data from each of the fields that I want to get to make sure I am getting the right information. Then I'm going to pass it into a new Python dictionary and save all the information that way so we can send it back to the template nice and easily. This is, I find, just the easiest way of doing things. Um, basically, it's nice and straightforward. I've covered this in another video as well. Um, we'll make sure there's a link to that available. To take the data we have just got and send it to the HTML page, we will put beer, it's equal to beer, after the rendered template index.html. This means that we are passing the information from the function out to be rendered with the register of the HTML template. Flask uses the Ginger2 engine, which uses double curly brackets to place data from our app.py into the HTML file. The dot is referencing each part of the dictionary we have called beer. Note that, this, that we should have the dot joining the two words together. It does work like this, but that's tidier. If I refresh the page now, we can see that it works. We are getting data from the API to send to the page each time we refresh. Now that's basically it. But obviously we want to tidy up the HTML a little bit and make this more, a bit more presentable and add a button to the page to refresh it, making it easier for the users. So we're going to go back to Bulma and go bound down to the layout section. This is where I'm going to find the hero block, which will add a nice banner across the top of the page. Let's clean up the wording too and style the block a little bit. The thing I like about Bulma is its simplistic syntax. Here we can see that we have a hero section style with just a few simple parameters using the is-wording. So medium is the size, primary is the color, and bold is the font. It makes it very simple to get good colors and basic styling done really, really easily. Always use containers in your HTML. It will help everything line up nicely. The content div is a simple way to control all the text size inside that div. Here I couldn't work out for ages why the styling hadn't been applied and like all bad programmers I went straight to the docs checking without checking my own code first. Can you see it? Yeah, there it is. That'll do it. So with that fixed we can see it all, it's all coming together. I'll make some more changes to the text, adding heading tags and paragraph tags where needed. Take some time and play around with Bulma or Bootstrap, whatever you've chosen to use. They are really, really simple and really easy to use. Have a play around and see if you can find some styles that you like uh, and that you can use in your projects going forward. Once you get the hang of it, it really is as straightforward as just a couple of lines of code to import their uh, CSS scripts and their JavaScript files. It makes, it really, makes your life really easy to get a nice, clean, basic app up and running and looking good straight away. I wanted to add a footer too, so to make the whole page look better, which with Bulma is super simple. Just lift the code and paste it in below the body. I didn't exactly know how to do a refresh button in HTML, so after Google I went. I found this post from Stack Overflow that had a few suggestions, so I tried the first one and it worked just fine. I guess ideally you would have this load a new item from the API and not just refresh the page, but for a tiny app I thought this would work just fine. I added some extra styling to the button and changed the wording, and we are done. That's it. A very simple Flask app. 18 lines of code, one HTML page, and some basic concepts covered. Let me know in the comments what your, ba or what your first basic web app was, or what it will be. Cheers guys, bye.